Josiah Kruitz. I'm a student at UNO, and I'm going to be talking about ES2015 or ES6 fat arrow functions. Now, many of you may have already heard about this and know how to use it, but for those of you who don't, hopefully this will be helpful. So, normally in JavaScript, in ES5 or earlier, you'll have um, just normal standard function notation where you have function and then parameters and then the body of your function. And if you want to return anything, you have to explicitly specify return. But um, something introduced into the ES6 standard was the fat arrow function. And there may have been some other programming languages that inspired this notation that I'm not too familiar with. But this, this may not have been original to uh, JavaScript. It, was it in Perl? It was in Perl. Okay. Thanks for asking. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, how would I guess that? Um, so instead of doing function x return x times 2 with parentheses around the parameter and braces around the body, you can do parentheses x equals right angle bracket braces return x times 2. And it does something very similar. As you can see, the result is the same. But that's not all. You can make your functions even smaller if you omit the parentheses if you only have one parameter. See, before we had the parentheses around the parameter, you don't have to do that if you only have one. And if you're trying to just return a single expression, you don't even need to use the return keyword or use braces. You can just say x goes to x times 2, which is a little bit more mathy kind of way to describe a function. Um, or you can omit both, and then it's really compact. Additionally, there's a difference when you use fat arrow functions when you're talking about the keyword this, which is sort of a very perhaps convoluted um, symbol in JavaScript. But basically, when you use a normal function, this refers to whatever is calling that function. But if, um, no, let me rephrase this. In normal functions, this refers to that function, but with fat arrow, you can actually refer to the parent function where it's declared in, instead of where it's invoked. Is that correct? I think that's... Okay, so anyway, if you would follow this code down here, um, this, you would think this might work, but this.seconds++ plus plus on the left will actually increment this.seconds inside of the inner function, which actually isn't defined, and that probably should be. But on the right hand, if you use the fat arrow function, this.seconds will actually refer to this this dot seconds, and it'll do what you think it will. So maybe a little bit nicer if you're in that circumstance, but I also want to be aware of that. Don't just go out switching all your functions for fat arrow functions because you might break something. And finally, if you're using promise chains, it can clean up your code a lot, as you can see here. Instead of having to dot then and explicitly state the function name, or the function keyword, and parentheses and brackets and return, you can see where eliminating that can be very useful. Although this is sort of a contrived example, you wouldn't do this exactly. But if you were doing something with promises, it might make your code a little bit more lightweight. So, that's all I have for you right now. Thank you very much for listening. You have one minute and 15 seconds for questions. Do you have any questions? So, what about the pin arrow? Do you guys have pin arrows? Uh, no. I think that would be a syntax error, because it would be like minus greater than. Go to CoffeeScript. Yeah, CoffeeScript might. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes? If you have something where you need to pass in multiple functions, can you use multiple fat arrows and commas between them? Sure, I think so. I believe the syntax will offer that. Yes? What's the browser support for fat arrow functions? Good question. So there's a website I think you can check out that has a list of ES6 supported features. I was playing with it in Chrome just a little bit earlier, so um, it works in Chrome, the version I have. Um, if I was connected to the Wi-Fi, I could show you. Just Google ES6 compatibility chart, and you might be able to find what browsers will be able to support this. Any other questions? Also, did you know? Yeah, you can play this little dinosaur game in Chrome. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of fun. Oh, I've got ten seconds. <laughs> got ten seconds to play that game. Oh no! Oh no! Um, oh! Oh! Time's up. Thank you very much. <laughs>